G'day folks, Ren here, and this is my vlog for Meredith's 48 hour readathon. So, technically, this readathon started last night uh, at about 5 o'clock last night, but Friday nights are my movie nights with my nieces, so no reading was getting done last night. But it is now Saturday, it's like quarter past ten in the morning, so I need to get stuff done. So what is this 48 hour readathon? This is a casual thing that Meredith from Reading with Merb is doing on her Discord um, every month, potentially. It's all very casual, you can do whatever you want for 48 hours, people might join. So I decided to be a part of this one. I missed the last one because I think I was in New Zealand when it was happening, but I'm here for this one. There's like, there's a book I should be reading, which is 16 Souls for the Queer or Not book club that I host. And the live show for that is in what, like four hours. So I should read that because I read about 30 pages, but I'm not. Because, you know, I like good choices. So, for this 48 hour readathon, my main goal is to read Custodians, which is the second in the Wheeler the Koori Warrior series. This is a middle grade First Nations fantasy story. And I loved the first one. I think I gave it five stars because it was just so good. And I'm really keen to read the second one and just see where it goes. I'd love to know how many books are going to be in this series. Because you know like a lot of middle grade series, they like, they go on forever. And like, I don't know if I can commit to that, but like, I would want to for this series. So it will be good to know. Oh my god, I just realized that the bookmark I chose for this book is How to Train Your Dragon. In this series, the the bad people ride dragons. Whoops. Um, but yeah, this is my main goal for the Oriton. I haven't started yet. I will start today. Look, there's just like pretty artwork and stuff in it. It's really nice. Anyways, this is what I need to read, my priority read, because this is also in my Aurelium for read in two days. So I'll read this in two days. So I'll try and get half done today, which will be like 170-ish pages. But if I need a break from that, I will do other things. I don't know if I'm going to do any audiobooks this weekend. I might. I mean, I'll probably have to because I'm really tired right now. <laughs> I went to bed really late and I woke up early. So my brain hasn't like fully come online yet. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But two other things or a few other things I want to read this weekend is Oh The Places You'll Go by Dr. Zeus. This is just... Mm, my mum wrote in it because she gave this to me when I graduated university. To our darling Ren, we are ever so proud of you. You have achieved so much. Congratulations on your graduation day with lots of love always, mum and dad. Aww, so cute. So yeah, I'll just smash this out. I think this was Read Without Touching the Ground for Aurelium. I don't know, but this isn't an Aurelium vlog. This is a 48 hour vlog. So um, I also want to read Dragonvine, which is a How to Train Your Dragon little comic. So that'll be fun. And it'll be good to like swap out like a novel with pictures, even though there are pictures in that. And then maybe if I have time or if I feel so inclined, I might try and get to Fire Force Volume 1. We'll just say Volume 1 for now. Oh, but I kind of want to read all of it. Um, but yeah, I'll try and get to Fire Force by Atsushi Okubo, who is the mangaka of Soul Eater, which is my favourite manga of all time. And I've been really wanting to read Fire Force for a while. Oh, I like, I woke up so stuffy and I'm like, please don't let me get sick. <laughs> I don't want to be sick, but I'm very having to breathe through my mouth a lot. It's not fun. Anyway, so I'm just watching Meredith's sprints. So I should read. I don't really know what comes next. I'm just doing my best even though I'm so stressed out. Everything just feels like a test that I fail so depressed when I can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me
by thirst I'm inspired by worth I desire your worst So you can just hide while I work I ain't tired you first I write a second, third verse About the lies you go disperse You never did sh I know it hurts Okay, so I read a hundred pages of Custodians and I could very much finish this in one day but I put this in for a two day thing so I don't know I'll try and read a little bit more and then I'll stop for the day and I'll read other things but I'm not loving this as much as I was loving the first book and for some reason I keep thinking that it's the writing that is preventing me from liking it more. It feels like the writing is more juvenile than the first one was. And I don't know if that's correct. Maybe, maybe the first one was as juvenile as this feels. And I just like don't remember. I know this is written for kids. I know it's written for younger audiences. And I know it is a younger middle grade series. So like they're called like junior series or something, aren't they? So like I knew that going in, but for some reason this time I'm like, it's a bit too far and I don't understand how that happened. This very much picks up immediately after the first book and there is very little recapping of the first one. Like I remember plenty of the first book, but not like not exactly how it ended so when it just immediately began again I was like what is happening who are all the characters again because there are so many animals in this that are traveling with Wheeler and it's like I can't remember all of their names and it was just like a little bit confusing for a minute there <sighs> also with the fact that there are so many animals in this that are with Wheeler it feels a bit I don't, like there's just there's too many and especially when like they're not the focus like there's a uh I don't know if it's an emu or not but there was a, a land bird that is with them that doesn't really do much well, in the first hundred pages doesn't really do much there's a possum again not doing much there's a koala that does a few things, so that's okay. But it's like, there are some of them that are just like, what What are you bringing to the story, you know? Like, I get that they, they have now had a little mission of like, okay, you that are not doing anything for the plot, you can now go and deliver a message to the people. I don't know, I don't know if I'm just being too harsh on this, because I loved the first one so much. And this time I'm like, sure? And there was this moment with a new character where Wheeler was crossing into a, another tribe's territory and the custodian of that land came and like attacked her, which I was like, you know, that's kind of fair. While a, a Wheeler was trans, trans, trespassing. Wheeler was trespassing. So like, I understand that. But then the custodian was like, let's have a race. Sure, okay. And then they have a bit of a race. And then during the race, the custodian is like, I'm testing you, Wheeler. You say you're the greatest warrior. Prove it, you know? And then they start like fighting. But like the custodian, what was her name? Alin Alinta? Yeah, Alinta. Alinta, she was like, now I'm going to aggressively teach you how to throw a boomerang. And... It was just a bit, I don't know, Alinta was just like weirdly aggressive and, but like in a playful way and I just didn't understand the point of, I mean the point of Alinta was like to teach Wheeler how to use a boomerang and to give them further information on their travels and their journey thing, but the way she went about it was just odd. I don't know, there were just some weird things. And then after the after the race, when Wheeler won, Alinta was like, I take back everything I said, you know, that race has basically meant nothing because even though you won, I'm going to say that you can't do any of the things that you won fair and square. And if you, like, take your prize, there will be war. I was like, what? 
So basically, what was the point of any of that? And I'm I'm so sad that I'm so not loving this. I'm trying. I don't want to be so critical of it because it's really good. But I don't know. It's just it's not living up to the magic of the first book, which sucks. But I hope it'll get better. But I am going to take a break from this for a second. I might start either Dragon Vine or Fire Force. One of those. And i got to go take Chopper outside now. But, so it's, it's going eh, basically. Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and the string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through Got issues in my head I like you in my bed But you keep me on red Oh, everything is like a test I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead And I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something out of my head Perfect timing. I just finished the Queer or Not live show for our July pick, which was 16 Souls, even though I didn't finish it. But everyone was so lovely on there, and we still had a good discussion about some things, so that was really awesome. And it's good timing because there is a minute until Liv's reading sprints start. Anyways, I did read Oh the Places You'll Go earlier and really enjoyed it. I mean, it's a, it's a Dr. Zeus book, but I thought it was really cool. I enjoyed it a lot and I can understand why my parents gave it to me. I finished a book for this 48 hour readathon, which is awesome. And I mean, I've also gotten things done. Like I did three loads of washing. It was all chopper's bedding. <laughs> But like, I got that done, and I would like to put away all my dishes as well. I want to read a few more chapters of this, I want to at least get like halfway, I mean it's not hard to be able to get halfway.
just made my very first charcuterie board. It's not particularly pretty, but it's got stuff on it. There's cheese and crackers and fruit. So good enough, right? Chopper is uh, trying to get the last little scraps from his dinner. But I'm pretty proud of making my first charcuterie board. Like it ain't super great, but I'm pretty proud of it nonetheless. Liv is currently doing sprints and I have been listening to Mermaid by S.T. Lin. I am almost finished. I think I've got like five minutes left of the audiobook and then I'll be finished. It's okay. It is a short story, a black trans retelling of The Little Mermaid and like it's fine but uh, like it's just it's so short that you don't have enough time to develop the characters or the friendships or the relationship or the world really and uh, like I just wanted more from it but I'm glad I am reading it and like it's good I just wanted more but now it's time to eat some food because I'm hungry <laughs> I'm gonna call it for tonight or day one of the readathon in a way so I got to page 218 of custodians I've got like 110 pages left to go I think it is really good the more I'm reading it the more I'm enjoying it I think I just maybe I forgot how junior this was but it is really good. There was some really good um, like life lessons to be learnt, which I really enjoyed. And we got to see Yowies. Oh, I love Yowies. Yowies are great. And the ones in here, they looked really cute. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. That was awesome. Um, and we also got like a, a giant emu. And that was super cool because there's a lot of emu iconography in some Aboriginal stories and artwork and all this kind of stuff. So seeing the emu was cool, but yeah, I am tired and I don't feel good because I ate so much food. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that charcuterie board because like that was tasty. But I think for day one, I did pretty well. Cause like, I am like, what? Two thirds of the way through this. I finished Oh The Places You'll Go and I finished Mermaid. That's pretty good. So I think Oh The Places you, You'll Go got four stars? No, it got five stars. That makes sense. Yeah, so that got five stars and Mermaid got three stars. So that's cool. This is looking like a, a four to a five. So it's definitely improved a lot since I last updated you. But day one going pretty well. And I even finally, after months and months, I have finally gotten up to date on my Goodreads reviews. So I've just been putting things occasionally in my currently reading and then not saying that I finished them or giving them a star rating. So I spent mm, like maybe two sprints tonight just doing that. I wasn't writing any proper reviews because like these are like four months worth of books. So I was like 
they're just going to get a star rating and that's it. I'm not going to change the dates of when I started and finished. They can all just say the 5th of August. That's fine. Because I just, I need to get them done. And I finally did it. And that feels amazing. So I have read 157 books this year and my goal was 150. So feeling awesome about that. There is quite a lot of manga in there, but I am enjoying manga, so I'm going to keep reading it. I think tomorrow my goal will be finish this and maybe finish this as well. And then potentially um, Cinderella, which is another one of the retelling, fairy tale retellings. So if I could do all that, that would be cool, but I can figure that out tomorrow. And you'll probably be seeing me in the exact same position tomorrow because sometimes you just gotta sit on a couch and do nothing. Ooh, she bright. The sun, she burns. Welcome to day two of the 48 hour readathon. I was about to get all set up on the couch just like I was yesterday because Emily's sprints are starting soon. And then I remembered I wanna wash these couch cushions today. So let's do that. And then I'll have to figure out somewhere else to sit for several hours. started limping on his other leg so for those who don't know Chopper is my dog he is a 10 year old staffy and oh he's being really cute now yay Hi. and he basically tore his ACL on his left right on his right side back in March and had to have surgery to fix it and when he had the surgery done the vets had said that he will most likely tear the other leg as well and will need surgery on that leg as well and I, I almost thought we would be in the clear but today he started limping. He's been a bit lethargic the past couple days. He hasn't been moving much, but like when he did move, he was fine. But he was just, yeah, not moving very much at all. And then this morning I was, I was staring at him a lot because I was like, are you limping? I couldn't exactly tell, but I thought something was a little off with his walk. And then for the past, I don't know, hour he's been in bed and then he just got up and started walking around and he walked straight to me um, and he was very obviously limping that time. His leg was 
fully up so he wasn't putting any pressure on it. Yeah, he keeps being very cuddly now so I think he's in a little bit of pain. So I have called the vets but he's going to go see the vet in about an hour and they'll do an assessment to see if they can feel if the joint is moving a lot and then if it is moving a lot then they can be like hmm yeah it probably has gone then he'll probably need to do an x-ray again and then book him in for surgery again <laughs> if I'm being honest I don't have much hope for this being anything other than another torn ligament so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, hello. So that is now going to be my day. <laughs> Look who didn't even want to take off their harness to eat their treat that they carried inside all by themselves after the vet. Is that a good treat, darling? Oh my god, you're so cute, I can't stand it. <laughs> oh my gosh. We've just been to the vet and they felt around his leg and they're pretty certain that the ligament did not go. So, so far, no surgery is in store for Chopper, which is good, always good to hear. So they think it's just arthritis and he just tweaked it, so he'll be on some pain medication for a little bit. Oh, he's off and, off and running again. But yeah, he'll be on some pain medication for a little while. You finished that already. If it's still bad, I'll take him back and they'll figure that out. But until then, he's okay. But I now need to go give him some pain medication. But I just had to film that because that was super cute. Okay, it is 3.30 on the Sunday and I kind of want to call it quits on this 48 hour readathon. Anyways, I have read a lot. So I finished Wheeler the Curry Warrior 2 Custodians and I really, really enjoyed this. At first I wasn't enjoying it as much as I liked the first one, and then the more I read, the more I was obsessed. And by the end of it, I gave this five stars. It was really good, really entertaining. I love Wheeler and the journey that she's on. I really love the cultural things that we get in this and it really makes you think about like particular values. So there was a thing in this especially where it was talking about how the attackers value gold and all they want is the gold that is on Kuri land and Wheeler's people, they care about ochre. And I was just, I was thinking about it and just, you know, you use gold to buy other things. You use it to make shiny jewelry and stuff that would let everyone know how rich you are. Whereas with ochre, you know, you use it to create things and tell stories and decorate yourself or tell your history and it's less about a status symbol. So yeah, it was a really interesting comparison and then just like a thing that I was then thinking of, of what, yeah, the meaning of certain things. I don't know how to describe it. But this was really great and I really appreciated the talk of forgiveness. So there is a certain character in here that Wheeler has some issues with. I'm trying not to spoil anything. But she has some issues with this character and at the very end of the book she remembers things that her grandmother said to her and she forgives this person and I was like wow like that's such a good a good message to tell kids because this is a middle grade story even I was really impressed with it because like I wasn't gonna forgive them <laughs> I was like 
you're one of the villains. I'm not gonna forgive you, but she did. And that was, that was just really impressive. I was very pleased with that. And I just want the third book already, but I have no idea when it's coming out. I finished that. Then I finished Dragonvine, which is this How to Train Your Dragon comic. And this was pretty okay-ish. I haven't put it through core pile, but I might give it like a three star. I enjoy the world, you know, because it's How to Train Your Dragon, of course I enjoy it. But there were some issues with the art. So it's all meant to be like one story, right? And in the first part, Hiccup is dressed in his second movie outfit. But then later on, he's in his first movie outfit. There shouldn't have been a change, but there was. And I was like, hmm, inconsistent. Yeah, some things didn't really line up timeline wise, but some things were really interesting. I liked that everyone was together and going on this little mission. I didn't particularly like that the antagonists in this were some of the only people of colour that we ever really see, which was kind of a theme in the movie as well, you know? So I had some issues with some things happening. And also the uh, new dragons that they introduced in this. I mean, Gobba himself calls them some of the ugliest dragons he's ever seen. I kind of agree. How come I suddenly can't find any of them? Oh well. But interesting enough, I'll give it three stars. I will keep it. I won't unhaul it because I love How to Train Your Dragon. This doesn't really add anything to the story. So yeah, after I finished that, I was like, do I want to start a new book? Do I want to start one of the manga that I thought I was going to read? And I decided to read Cinderella by S.T. Lin, which is one of the black trans fairy tale books. And I finished that. That was probably like, I really don't like Cinderella retellings. I don't like Cinderella in the first place. And any Cinderella retelling that I've read, I've either been really bored with, severely disliked, or DNF'd because I just couldn't get through it. And I was worried that this one would fall into the same kind of category. But this is my favorite Cinderella retelling ever. I really enjoyed it. Like, especially considering I was so like eh with mermaid yesterday and now this one I'm like amazing it gets a four star I mean it's basically a 4.5 I couldn't I couldn't give it a five because it's so short but oh it was, it was very uh very close to a five star it was just so good. I really liked Ella. I liked that her struggles felt real and not cartoonish like some Cinderella retellings feel. The fact that she she got to go to the ball in a dress and makeup and like be herself was really beautiful even though her stepmother thought that it was like a funny thing because her stepmother is um, transphobic and just thought it'd be like, oh, ha ha, we'll see a man in a dress. And it's like, no, you'll see a woman being herself. So it was an interesting like spin on how that worked. And I appreciated just, I don't know how to describe it without giving things away, but Ella had to then leave and she like starts her life as Ella and away from her stepmother. And she finds herself and her place in the world and she just like builds her life. And I'm like, I want an, an entire book of just Ella's little like country life. That's all I want. Cause that would have been beautiful. But then like there was a happy ending and everything. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And I really liked Ella and she was super into gardening. She was like an amazing gardener. And it just, uh, and she had a dog named Lady. And I used to have a dog named Lady. It was, it was cute and I really, really liked it. So that's like 4.5 stars. So I am getting everything read. So I've technically read five books for this 48 hour readathon and it's 20 to four. So I definitely won't have enough time to finish anything else. I'm gonna end it here. 
So for a 48 hour readathon, I read five books. I read Oh The Places You'll Go by Dr. Zeus. I think that was a four star, four or five. I can't remember. I read Mermaid by S.T. Lynn. That was a three star. I read uh, Custodians by Jordan Gould and Richard Pritchard, which was a five star. I read Dragonvine and that was a three star. And then I read Cinderella by S.T. Lynn and that was a 4.5 star. So five books in two days as well as getting a heap of stuff done like I cleaned my oven I did some dishes I did I've done four loads of laundry this weekend did the couch cushions like I've wanted to for a long time and I finally got to get up to date with my Goodreads so I think I did pretty well and I also had the Queer or Not live show I got so much done this weekend. Thank you very much to Meredith for having another 48 hour readathon, making it super casual and fun. And I've had such a good time. So I'm gonna leave it here because Chopper is crying to come back inside. So I need to go deal with my whiny baby. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.